So often when we're teaching our clients and people in the coaching world how to give feedback, you know, there's two sides of that equation. And I think we're missing really 50% of the equation. I think we also need to teach people how to accept feedback. Recently, I was talking to a employee of somebody that we were teaching um, their boss how to coach. And the employee kept saying things like, well, I feel like my manager's attacking me. I feel like all he ever brings up is the things I do wrong. Sound familiar? And she was really defensive and really, really defensive. And I finally said to her, I said, why do you think your boss is giving you feedback? She said, what do you mean? I said, Forget how he's doing it. Forget the words that were used. Just forget that for a second. Why do you think he's doing that? She said, well, I don't know. And I said, well, I think it's because he wants to ruin your weekend. And she started to smile. And I use humor when I coach. And it was really interesting. I said, always remember, a person's intent is not always in an alignment with the perception. Your perception is you feel this way. You feel attacked. So I said, so how have you shared that with him? She goes, I haven't. I said, well, I think you should. I think there's a really healthy conversation there. I said, do you mind if I ask you a really pointed question? She said, sure. I said, have you shared this with anybody else in the workplace? She puts her head down. She said, yeah. I said, okay. I said, are you sure those people aren't going to share it either? And what's the risk of that getting back to your boss? And she said, a pretty big risk. I said, so let's kind of recap for a second. He came to you, talked to you directly, and maybe didn't do it flawlessly, maybe didn't do it perfectly, maybe he could have done it better, who knows, but he came to you. And she said, yeah, you're right. And I go, I'm not trying to win an argument. I'm trying to give you a perspective that sometimes giving people feedback, especially constructive feedback, we don't want to do that. I would prefer we never had to do that. But sometimes there's a reason. It doesn't mean we're always right. So if we spend time lending our conversations to the perspective of why we give feedback and then equally how to accept feedback. Notice I said accept, not agree. And I think sometimes we misunderstand the value of feedback. Feedback is bad if I don't agree with it. When in fact, when someone gives you feedback, they do not have a vested interest in ruining your weekend, making you feel terrible. So when I think about agreement, that should not be criteria of not accepting and or appreciating someone providing you that feedback. Good luck.